So let's talk about the GRE. Um, the GRE is slowly becoming more obsolete when it comes to PA school applications and being one of the art entrance exams. Uh, more schools are kind of veering towards the PA cap, but there are several programs that still use the GRE. And if you are interested in applying to those programs, you're gonna need to take it. So I had someone ask me about like how to structure the GRE, how to structure studying for the GRE when you don't have that much time. So that is what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. What's up you guys, it's Adana. Um, I am a PA and I make mostly PA, like medically health related videos, but I talk about things along my PA path journey. And one such thing is the GRE. Um, now, if you don't know about the GRE and you're trying to get into grad school, uh, you'll learn about the GRE very soon enough because it is an entrance exam for the majority of grad schools, grad programs. Um, and specifically right now, uh, it is like the number one test that we take to get into PA school. With that being said, uh, like I stated before, it is becoming a little bit more obsolete, I would say. Uh, you know, less, less and less schools are using it as a marker of the type of student that you will be in PA schools because uh, there are some aspects of the test that doesn't really translate into your PA studies. That being said, it still is a test that has to be taken, okay? And so uh, I had a question asked that they were like, you know what, I work I work this summer, I work as a camp counselor, and I'm not gonna have time to really study for the GRE, like, or I don't feel like I will have time. So how do I structure this test? And so if you've seen any of my other GRE videos, <laughs> you know that uh, I did pretty decently on the GRE and I studied it within a month to take my GRE and there was like a path that I chose um, because I knew that I only wanted to take this test once. I didn't want to take it again um, and there were several reasons for that but that was just my choice. And so I made, I came up with like this plan on how I would attack the GRE and I put it on my platform, Get That to University. So if you want like the full laid out plan, then you have to join the platform. Um, but I will give you just a couple like really quick tips that I used here um, on my YouTube channel uh, because I love you guys. Okay, so here we go. So when structuring like your GRE and let's say like you don't really have that many hours in the day to study like I did because when I was studying, I did it as my job. So I was studying eight hours a day. So I know not everybody has that opportunity to be studying eight hours a day and that's fine. For me, I think that that's what works best for me. But for you, if you have only a limited amount of time, then you should really focus. Like you should hone those hours, those two or three hours that you have as your studying time. So if you're in, like school or if you're working throughout the majority of the day when you come home you should carve out at least two hours but I would say three hours of your time to study now you can do that in like I would say maybe like five 30 minute blocks or whatever the case may be that's like two and a half hours or so or if you really just have like two hours um, but you should carve out that time to focus on the subject matter that you have the most difficult time with if that's math if that's vocab um, if it's the writing which really doesn't matter that much when it comes to like your GRE uh, unless you're trying to get into some type of like writing type um, graduate program uh, or program where you would use writing a lot like the the analytical writing portion of the GRE for PA school does not really matter they look at the numbers so they look at your verbal like your vocab and then they look at the math okay the quantitative so when it comes down to it focus on the area that you have the most difficulty with and so if that is the quantitative section where it's all like kind of like sciencey math based then spend those two to three hours a day studying I suggest you study for six days okay on the seventh day you rest um, I'm a big big believer in having a day of rest um, my day of rest is obviously the Sabbath um, which uh, falls from Sunset Friday to Sunset Saturday. That is what I always have lived my life by and I promise you it has been like 
the saving grace uh, in terms of keeping me sane because you get to pull away and you get to kind of focus on things other than whatever, okay? <laughs> like put whatever it is other than school, work, the test, um, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, life and your career goals, you get to kind of focus on you. Um, for me, I get to focus on me and God and that relationship, family. And so it just kind of brings things together and it's just a nice day of rest. And so study for six days, on the seventh day you rest and then you start all over again. And so if you're doing this for like 30 days, then, you know, you'll have about four or so weeks um, of yourself just kind of studying hard, going hard three hours a day in that particular subject matter, and then you're doing this six days a week. Now, obviously when you're structuring this, it will depend on how far out from the GRE test you are that you will have to kind of lay out this groundwork, but that's something that you will have to figure out. If it's 30, 60, 90 days, however many days it is, you still need to be studying at least two hours a day for six days a week. I think after you do that, one really good tip that I found um, really Really, really beneficial to me when I was studying for the vocabulary section um, is or like the verb it's really like the verbal section but it's pretty much all vo vocab right like synonyms antonyms and like short stories that you have to kind of understand like the meaning of certain words for us so with that section it was really really good for me to kind of walk around with flashcards um, you can have flashcards on your phone you know you can have flashcards like you know, old school paper flashcards, however you want to do it. Um, I think you should be reviewing those flashcards throughout the day. Now that does not go into your like two and a half hours of studying because it takes nothing. Like we are on our phone constantly. Like if, if you're standing in the grocery line or if you're like at work at camp and you know, you're waiting for a child to come out of the nurse's office because they skinned their knee, whatever the case may be, you might pull out your phone and you're going on Instagram. But instead of going on Instagram, what you can be doing is pulling out your phone and looking at your vocab words. Or you can go to YouTube and, you know, you can flip through my vocab word section video um, or my shorts. That will be, you know, vocab shorts. So whatever the case may be, however you want to study this, I think you should use that throughout the day as just kind of a tool to be like familiarize yourself with the vocab. And I always say use it or lose it, right? So when it comes down to it, try to use some of these words words that you're not really familiar with that you're now getting to know and understand in your everyday life. Like, you know, um, I love loquacious. I've always loved that word um, from the first time I found out about it. And it just means like really like talkative and like fluid and talkative. And sometimes I can be very loquacious and other times I can be very quiet. Um, but you know, that's me. And I think that if you're like, again, at camp and you find there's some like little camper that is just con continuously talking, uh, you can be like, you know, why are you so loquacious? And they may not know what you mean, but it's just like something funny and fun that you can use to just kind of go ahead and um, really just use those words in everyday life and live them. So for me, I think those are kind of like some tips that you can take in terms of your structure. After you come home and you've like done a couple things, take two to three hours a day to study the subject matter that is giving you the most difficulty. Um, I would say you should also take a test like maybe like every other day or every third day I think is like a sufficient amount of time and try to make sure that you structure that testing um, I think testing area, testing format as close to the format of the GRE as possible. So like no sound, you're off like kind of like in a little small cubicle space by yourself. Um, it's just you and the computer, you and the book, and you're doing that test. Uh, so you can really kind of simulate the test day as much as possible so you get used to this. Um, and the more that you practice, the more that you get used to it, the more comfortable you get with the exam, the easier the exam day will actually be and hopefully uh, the higher score you'll get. So hopefully these tips were helpful to you. If you have any other questions for me, please leave in the comment section below. <laughs> If you have any other questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at it on the PA and on Instagram at Get That's University. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. 